Hello again everybody, this is Steve, uh, coming to you with another video uh, on Prophecy, ironically enough, which dreams are included with that. Uh, you're going to get a chuckle out of this. I had to actually re-record this because there was still more stuff that happened uh, after my original recording, and I added it to my blog post, which is by the same name, and you know, it's interesting how God has been working through all of this. Uh, so I want to share this with you guys and show you a series of connections which were confirmations and expounding and other messages that all tied together into the into the same initial message. So, um, and this is dealing with two dreams and I think four encounters total if I remember correctly. So I will switch over to that and we'll break, I'll break this down and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's the blog post, and yes, it's short. Oh my gosh, I actually did something short. <laughs> For those of you that know me, you understand the joke, because I'm <clears throat> rather bad about doing short messages. But anyways, uh, okay, just to give you a timeline of the events, uh, late February, uh, February 29th, ironically enough, I had uh, dreamed the great balloon crash. If you haven't read that, go back and read it. If you haven't seen the video on it, Go back and watch that if you just want to watch the video. Uh, now, a week later, my dad comes to me with a stream called the, what I've called the Three Meals. Uh, that's also up on my blog. Uh, it's, by the time this is posted, it should be up on the uh, on YouTube and Rumble, too. So, uh, that Three Meals dream, I told it to some friends. One of them then had a virtual fulfillment of it during their mealtime. They literally had the three different portions and the three different food items in the order they were given in the dream and in the, in the quantities and sizes and everything. Literally it was a it was a one-to-one -one fulfilling of that original dream. Now that doesn't mean the dream's fulfilled because the dream's pointing towards something else. This was just a confirmation. Uh, and then the following morning after that I, had, I was doing Bible study, and Psalm 37 came up, uh, verses 18 and 19. Uh, the blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. Which, if you read the three, the three meals dream, that this verse will make sense. It's, it's essentially confirmation and uh, encouragement that even though that's coming, Christians will be protected. If you're not a Christian, um, you know, I'm not going to quote unquote shove my religion down your throat. But uh, the only thing that's going to get you through what's coming up is uh, God. That's all I got to say. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. So, uh, I mean, you, well, you might get through it okay, but it's going to just suck six ways to Tuesday. Uh, Christians won't have that problem. But that, that's neither here nor there. That's not my primary focus for this. I'm got, trying to put together all of the connections here. Uh, anyways, shortly after that, the following night, I had this just crazy spiritual warfare dream. If, for those of you who know what that is, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't, uh, basically you are fighting the devil in your dreams. It, uh, you can research more on it later, uh, but that's the long and short of it. And it it started out with me going down into a series of tunnels and I ended up coming into this uh, room where I ha had a bunch of my stuff and I was I was going to grab my stuff and take it out of there but then this witch literally locks me in the room and I'm looking at my stuff and it's like okay I got a choice between either take my uh, keep my stuff or and be locked in here and, and die of starvation thirst and all that or I can just leave the stuff break out and come back for the stuff later which I chose option two which, you know, I managed to break the door down because she had lightly secured it, but hadn't fully secured it yet, so I wasn't sealed in. Uh, I just had to, I just had to play, uh, like, a charging bowl and bash against the door a couple times. It finally broke, which, there's symbolism in that, too, but uh, I digress. Uh, anyways, I had to fight, my, you know, I got out there, and then I got into a fight with her. She didn't want me to get out of there, so I'm fighting her and just... Oh, I mean, that was, that was like uh, Avengers Civil War, I'll tell you. That was just a crazy knockdown dragout with this witch. 
Uh, anyways, I get past I get past her finally. I finally get her subdued. And then as I'm as I'm trying to make my way out, I'm getting attacked by demons, and I'm having to rebuke them in the in the name of Jesus. And I finally got out of there and got to the surface and got free of that. And that was the basics of that spiritual warfare dream. I've had others similar to that where I'm where I'm fighting demons. I had one in a dream once that literally tried to choke me out in the dream, and Jesus came in and and saved me. He personally came down and saved me from that demon. So, like I say, you know, I've got like if you look at my, I think I'm, I have it on my blog. If I don't, let me know. Uh, let me know. Of course, I could probably check right now. Uh, yeah, okay, right there it is. The headless woman. That was another spiritual warfare dream. That one was just crazy. Uh, the headless woman. Um, that, like I said, that was another spiritual warfare dream. That's not the only one. I've had a bunch of them. And I, you know, I've had enough of them to know when, you know, when they're there. And usually those show up when I'm doing something right. <laughs> or God's doing something special for me. But anyhow, try, I, I'm kind of diverting from really going into detail on those because I'm trying not to make this too long because I did promise I'd make this short. Uh, so, you know, I got hours worth of possible conversational material on those, which we can talk about those more later if you'd like. Just let me know. Uh, for right now, I'll just say they're out there. You can read them yourself and kind of see what's going on. But anyways, uh, and anyways, after the spiritual warfare dream, then God takes me or leads me over to this other guy on, uh, I think it was Twitter. And he said some things that suddenly opened my eyes to the meaning of a couple of parts of my castle of the despot dream. Again, I can flesh that out at another time. I just want to state the fact that that happened too. So, in short, I had the balloon crash dream. Dad had the three meals dream. A friend of mine had the uh, the uh, confirmation of Dad's dream. Then I had Psalm 37. Then I had the spiritual warfare dream. Then I had the revelation about one of my other dreams. All within short succession. The only part that, you know, it's like the great balloon crash came first and then it was a pause. And then all the other stuff just stacked up one right after another, day after day after day. I'm, I haven't had anything since then. Uh, I got one new dream, but I'm trying to decode it. Uh, I don't know what to do with it yet, so I haven't posted it. But I got that one that's come since then, but I'm not sure. You know, I'm still not entirely sure that it has prophetical meaning. And even if it does, it's prophetical meaning to me, which means I probably won't post it on YouTube. I might on my blog, but I won't on YouTube. But anyways, I just thought this was kind of a neat little series of events where God gives me a truth, a truth, confirmation truth, uh, you know, and, and encouragement. And all this just right, boom, 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 right in a row. I don't know why you waited so long between Dad's dream and mine, but... I figure it was a case of I needed time to process my dream before he started bringing in all the other stuff. So, anyhow, that's uh, all I've got for this one. I just thought you guys would find that really interesting, how that all just kind of stacked up together, one right after another as confirmations. Uh, and, like I say, given the, given the depth and the intensity of that spiritual warfare dream, Satan is just not, not in the slightest bit happy about all of what's happened, so... Which, to me, is actually kind of encouraging. Anytime Satan's ticked off, it means something good's happening. <laughs> so, anyhow, I'll leave it at that, and I'll catch you guys later.